Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aguian and here's some of the stories we have for you tonight. Tonight we pay tribute to the victims of 9-11, heavy security for Jeffrey Brown, and Music in Motion gets ready to strut their stuff. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. Top story tonight. If you were traveling near the Superior Court earlier today, you probably thought it was a scene from Law and Order. It's the high profiled Jeffrey Brown murder case, what has now been known as the JFK Christmas Day shooting. News Channel 8's Wes Small tells us the history could be made in the Virgin Islands when it comes to picking a jury for this trial. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Yeah, we are here at VI Superior Court where we have security uh, off the charts probably never seen security like this before. We have extra uh, marshals here, extra security you see behind me. Earlier today, uh, we actually had um, uh, officers and so forth in the bushes as well. Um, there's parking, there's no parking in here. Uh, you are seeing, in other words, um, a lot of activity here today. One of the reasons, it's all because of the Christmas morning shootout in JFK involving former police officer Jeffrey Brown. You might remember it was 2007 when a hail of 30 bullets or more left two young men, one of them a promising athlete and also four wounded. One of the reasons that this trial could be historic, that because one of the first times in Virgin Island court history, we could have a sequestered jury chosen by numbers only. That is how serious this high profile case is involving former police officer Jeffrey Brown, his brother-in-law, Louis Melendez, and also his wife. Why is this case so high profiled? What other information does Jeffrey Brown have? This case has monumental proportions, that to be sure. This case just beginning. Jury selection today. The new judge that took the place of late Francis Durama is Superior Court Judge Head, Daryl Donahue. The high drama in this case is just beginning and News Channel 8 is all over this one. At Superior Court, with extra security, locked down beyond measure, parking all over the road. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And in other news, today is the eighth anniversary of the terror attacks on America. Of course, we're talking about 9-11. Let's go to senior correspondent, News Channel 8's Lee Carl. September 11th, the day of infamy, as one president put it, about a nation that attacked another nation. But this wasn't a nation. It was at a check after that. And some of these other pictures were given to me by friends and relatives on the Internet. Here's one of the buildings about to collapse. And the next set of pictures my daughter saw as she stepped out of her uh, the subway as the second plane went into the South Tower. It was a devastating moment for her. She then had to walk all the way up uh, to uh, uh, her husband so that they could catch a, a, a train or something into Long Island. These are some dramatic pictures after the towers have collapsed. The surrounding buildings were burning. And I think what we'll do right now is just let you look at some of the pictures before we talk to our firefighters who went up there to receive or to present a $43,000 check from the people of the Virgin Islands. Right, we made a presentation of the check last Friday to um, the state comptroller, Mr. McCall, Carl McCall. Um, the connection with Mr. McCall was made by Lieutenant Governor Los James. He made a connection that we can present the check to him personally. Now, how many firefighters went up? St. Croix, St. John, right? We had three firefighters from the St. Thomas, St. John district and two from the St. Croix district. Do you remember their names? Yes, um, firefighters from the St. Croix district were firefighters Davidson Charlemagne. Um, firefighter Angel Torres from this district was uh, Firefighter Luen Anthony 
firefighter Eustace Grant Jr. and me, myself, firefighter David Hyde. In St. Thomas, Lee Carl for News Channel 8. Thanks, Lee Carl. Truly a day that will live in infamy. And the following is a follow-up to yesterday's exclusive report on the copper still that was taken from the Wim Plantation Museum found the rain, remains of in Campo Rico. Here's News Channel 8's West Small. We are again in Campo Rico, unfortunately at the site of the two-ton copper still that was taken from the Wim Museum, um, that piece that goes back years and years, a, a piece of St. Croix's history. Uh, you might remember as you watched well, some you file footage the, from the yesterday's exclusive is. report um, that copper remnants of the still was found in this area. And, um, one of the curators uh, for the Landmark Society and Wim Museum identified the piece and um, let it be known that it's just a sad situation in general that thieves were able to get away with this horrible crime. Now let's um, let you in on some more information. We now understand that there possibly could be a copper theft ring going on in the Virgin Islands. The cost of copper is um, very fruitful for these thieves. Uh, they can um, then chop them up and get them on a boat and get them out of here. And that's what we believe has happened to this piece of history. Now we understand that the Boys and Girls Club of St. Croix was hit at their recycling center where copper was placed there. I believe that's in Anna's Hope. And they were robbed of a substantial amount of copper. Also, you might remember a few weeks ago at John H. Woodson School, as the air conditioning was being placed in from a long time coming, the copper wiring uh, was stolen. Remember that. So you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out that there is a copper uh, theft uh, on the rise, at least. We don't know if it's orchestrated uh, or conducted by a gang or a group, but we do know that copper uh, thefts are on the rise. Now, back to this unfortunate situation here in Campo Rico. The abandoned cars. Now you're watching file footage of exactly what goes on inside these abandoned cars. You see uh, some Heineken bottles and so forth. Look at the clothes that are inside this vehicle. And I mean, it's almost like an abandoned condominium, if you will. Now, even though we brought this to the VIPD's attention yesterday and the powers that be, after all, these vehicles should be towed out of here. They're still here, still here for crimes to be committed in this area. Here you hardworking people, a lot of them senior citizens who are retired, are held hostage here in Campo Rico. Now, what will it take for the powers that be to get these vehicles out of here? They can be nothing but conduits to violence, rats, centipedes. Look at this, drug use, alcohol use, um, sexual acts committed at night also. This is all coming from the neighborhood. Remember, it was about a year ago, it's all coming back to this reporter now, that I stood here with two Campo Rico activists complaining about these same cars. And it's the same cars that were here when this museum artifact was found in Campo Rico. I guess it'll be another year. I'm Wes Small for News Channel.